If you watch my videos, then you know, I love LEDs. Like every second video involves them. But there's been some questions and comments on how to use them properly. And sometimes I don't even handle them the correct way. So today I will tell you how easy it can be and how difficult it can get to handle a LED properly. So let's get started. First of all the beginner's tutorial. For example, you buy your LEDs on Amazon or eBay or elsewhere. Often there exists no datasheet for them, which is a shame, but there are two important parameters which are always given. The forward voltage, which is 3.2 volts, and the current they need to light up ideal, which is 20 milliamps. Now you've got your power source, for example a 12 volt acid battery or button cells, or in my case a 9 volt battery. The simplified circuit to light up a LED looks like this. If we would not use a resistor, the LED would die faster than you can say, well shit. So what value does the resistor need? Kirchhoff's voltage law gives the answer. The voltage sum in a closed network must be zero. On the left side is the voltage of our power source and the right side is the voltage of our load. And I think everyone sees that the voltage of the resistor must be 5.8 volts to solve the equation. Then you can just calculate the value for the resistor by Ohm's law. Resistance equals voltage divided by current. And since the LED and resistor are connected in series, the 20 milliamps will also flow through the resistor. So 5.8 volts divided by 0.02 amps equals 290 ohms. Two of those 150 ohm resistors in series will work fine. When you don't have the correct value, then use a bigger one like I did with 300 ohm. Another rating for the resistor is power. Those are a quarter watt resistors. We heat them up with a power of 5.8 volts multiplied by 0.02 amps, which equals 0.116 watts. Since 0.116 watts is smaller than 0.25 watts, everything is fine. If you overload your resistor, then it might look somehow like this. Now you want to light up two of your LEDs. You could build the same resistor LED combination in parallel, but that is a waste of power. Just put the two LEDs in series and repeat the same calculation process. This time we only have a voltage drop of 2.6 volts across the resistor. A resistor value of 130 ohms and a power loss of 0.052 watts. We got twice the light and half of the wasted power. That is awesome. But we do not have enough voltage to put 3 in series. The LEDs will be darker this way. Which brings us to the advanced territory. First of all, never trust the manufacturer. It says 3.2 volts, but the LED draws way more current than 20 milliamps. 3 volt as a forward voltage is much more precise. Let's imagine you have a 3.3 volt power source and the blue LED with a forward voltage of 3.3 volts. So you don't need a resistor, right? Well, it does work, but it is not a good style. When we record the characteristic line of the LED, you can see that the current consumption ascends exponential, which means when you have a small voltage change in your power source, it can destroy all your LEDs. In that case, try using a small resistor to linearize the current consumption. This way, voltage changes do not affect your LEDs that much. Let's take a look at this circuit I used in my Moped Mod video. You can see I have soldered a lot of LEDs in parallel and just used one power resistor to limit the current. And this guy right here criticized this a lot. And he is right. Maybe a bit over dramatic, but still right. And here's why. Even though the forward voltage should always be 3 volts with those LEDs, it is not. Every LED is different and here in my case the forward voltage varies between 2.9 volts and 3.1 volts. With this many LEDs in parallel it is not possible to use one big resistor because all of those want a different voltage level. So I calculated with the average and always went a bit bigger with the resistor value. 
That means in this example that those with less forward voltage will get more current than the others, which means they will die sooner. And the others have to endure more current, which make things just more terrible. But to my defense, it is always effort versus benefit. And since I was using so many LEDs, it was just the easier solution, which will probably last long enough. Let's go back to the two LEDs in series. Since there exists a variation in the forward voltage, this gets more complex as well. The easiest solution for this is to just measure when 20 mA flow, because the voltage of those always varies a bit, but they all want those 20 mA. And that is actually the best way to drive LEDs, not in a constant voltage mode, but a constant current mode. You can build a simple constant current source with a LM317 and a resistor. Here's the schematic. Even though this works, the efficiency is quite horrible. The TLC5940 is also a popular example of a constant current driver. But this will be a subject in another video. For now, this should be enough. I hope you like this subject. Please support my videos by sharing them and please don't forget to like. Stay creative and I will see you next time.